Okay, uh, let me uh, tell you about the contents of this video, which I'm going to cover. First, I will uh, explain the objective. I mean, uh, recognize a face with or without mask. And then I will explain the proposed uh, deep CNN based scheme. Uh, then I will uh, uh, throw some lights on the TensorFlow, Keras and the Python implementation. And then I will explain the image data set used for this problem. And then I will explain the Python code to implement uh, the deep CNN using the TensorFlow and the Keras libraries. And in the last, I will explain the simulation result analysis. So let's go ahead. But before going ahead, I strongly recommend you to watch following my two videos. The first one is about how to create a deep neural network in the MATLAB, uh, where I have taken example of the digit recognition. Although it is in MATLAB, but, uh, you will have the better ideas uh, about the deep neural network and its corresponding layers. So link is given in the description. And the second video is uh, about the introduction to the deep learning, where you can learn more about uh, the structure of the uh, deep CNN. So the link is also given in the description. So now let's start this video. So let, uh, let us first discuss the objective. So here our objective is to recognize a face uh, with mask or without mask from an image. Of course, this is in the offline mode, not in the real time. Uh, and uh, here you can see that you have implemented a deep CNN, uh, I mean the convolutional neural network, which has the input uh, image. So from this image, it will recognize whether this uh, face has mask uh, or uh, no mask. Okay, so this is our objective. And uh, now let us see uh, the what is the structure of the CNN which we are going to use. Okay, so uh, this is a generalized uh, structure of a deep CNN. Here you can see uh, that you have the input image, which is first convolved uh, with the various uh, filters. Uh, and then a result uh, goes through uh, the rectification linear units where uh, the negative values are omitted. Then it goes to the pooling. Uh, generally, the max pooling is uh, applied where the maximum value is uh, taken uh, from uh, a two by two window and then it uh, goes to the further uh, similar uh, layer combinations. So this is known as a feature detection part and uh, in the output uh, which is known as the classification part we have the few fully connected layers uh, uh, which are used for uh, final classification. So in the end oh, we apply the softmax uh, activation and then we get the confidence values uh, uh, category wise as a result. So this is a generalized structure of the deep CNN which we are going to uh, implement in this video. So uh, now let us uh, uh, see uh, that uh, what are the TensorFlow and the Keras and how we can implement them in the Python. So the deep CNN uh, is implemented in Python in this video uh, with help of the TensorFlow and the Keras libraries. So the TensorFlow is uh, an end-to-end -end open source platform for machine learning created by the Google Brain team. And uh, this TF has a comprehensive, flexible ecosystem of tools, libraries, and the community resources that helps researchers to uh, develop the state-of-the-art machine learning applications. So this TF uh, is available for the C++, Java, and the Python. Uh, it has also uh, the different hardware uh, compatibility. So it can run in the single CPU environment. It can also uh, exploit the power of the GPU uh, for speed up uh, execution and it uh, can also uh, run in the TPU environment. I mean the tensor processing units. And uh, the Keras, let's see the Keras. Keras is actually the deep learning uh, uh, API written in the Python, uh, which runs on the top of the machine learning platform, I mean the TensorFlow, to define and train the various neural network architectures. It was actually the develop uh, with a focus on the enabling the fast experimentation. So it provides essential abstractions and building blocks for developing and the shipping uh, machine learning solutions with a high iteration velocity. So Keras actually empowers engineers and researchers to take full advantage of the scalability and the cross-platform capabilities of TensorFlow. So uh, here uh, for Python code development in this video, I have used a Spider IDE 
under the Anaconda Package Manager. The latest version of Anaconda can be downloaded from this link, uh, which is also given in the description. So you can directly jump to the web page of Anaconda. And uh, the TensorFlow actually does not come with the Anaconda. So we have to install it. So to install the TensorFlow 2.3, which is the latest version at this moment, first open the Anaconda prompt and type uh, this instruction. That is a PIP install TensorFlow equal to 2.3. So when you type this instruction, uh, uh, then you have uh, different options to follow. So follow all the on-screen instructions and wait for the installation to complete. It will download a list of dependencies actually. So this uh, TF version actually works on the uh, Python 3.8 and this latest version of the Anaconda also includes a Python 3.8. So that is a very good thing. And uh, now let us uh, go through the image data set on which we will uh, implement uh, this uh, deep CNN. So this uh, image data set is available on the Kaggle. So this is the link of uh, data set, uh, which is also given in the description. So you can directly jump to this web page. So when you open this web page, you get this type of interface uh, where you can locate this uh, download button. Uh, so when you uh, click this, uh, you will uh, download the data set, which has a 330 MB size. So it includes these three folders. So for our problem, we need only this uh, trained folder, which has a uh, two subdirectories. So this uh, trained folder is sufficient. Uh, it is downloaded and uh, it has a uh, two subfolders uh, named uh, with mask and without mask so like this. Uh, so when you uh, unzip uh, or unwrap this, uh, you get uh, these two folders in your directory. So save this uh, folder in your current working directory. Uh, you can also change uh, its name such as my DBM or whatever you want to uh, give its name. Uh, these images are uh, color RGB images and in PNG format. And also all the images are of the different sizes. So there are total 10,000 images and uh, each folder has a 5,000 uh, images. Okay, so 5,000 images with mask and 5000 images without mask. So let's uh, have some samples. So these are some sample images uh, with mask and these are some sample images uh, uh, without mask. Okay. So let me show you uh, my directory where I have stored uh, these uh, images. So you can have the idea. So this is the folder my DBM, uh, which I have stored in my current working directory. So let me open it. So it has a two folders with mask and without mask. So let me open this. So here you can see that uh, the different images of uh, different sizes uh, with mask. So here you can see uh, there are 5000 items. I mean 5000 images. And uh, let me open the second folder without mask. So here are the faces 5000 faces without mask. Okay. So this is the directory structure. Now let me go to my presentation back. So this is the Python code uh, that will be uh, used for implementing the deep CNN for uh, classification of these uh, images. So first you have to import some uh, libraries and packages such as uh, matplotlib for plotting uh, uh, the images and uh, uh, some curves, uh, then numpy for some computations and these are uh, related with uh, uh, the TensorFlow and Keras that will be used for implement implementing the model. And these two uh, will be used for uh, uh, opening a system dialog box where you can choose uh, uh, a single image for testing purpose. Okay. So now first we have to define uh, the data directory where our uh, uh, data set is uh, stored. So as uh, I have shown you that I have stored those two folders in this directory my DBM. So this is just a simple string and uh, with help of this pathlib dot path, you are reading this uh, data directory. And then uh, we are defining the best size and the image size. As you have seen that uh, the images in the directories are of different sizes. So we have to resize those uh, uh, images uh, uh, to make them of equal size. So I'm choosing the 64 by 64 image size. And uh, with this command, uh, we are reading all the images for training. So all the training images will go into the train DS. 
uh, we are reading these images from the Keras pre-processing uh, instruction that is the image data set from the directory. So here we are defining the validation split uh, that is equal to the 20%. It means uh, it will split images uh, into 80% and 20%. Okay, so uh, we have total 10,000 images. So 80%, I mean the 8,000 images will be used for training and uh, uh, the 2k i mean 2000 images will be used for testing i mean the validation so uh, that is why this validation split is given uh, the subset is defined as a training i mean these all images will be uh, under the name training a seed is defined that will be used for shuffling uh, this uh, image set and here the image size is defined so all the in images will be resized to 64 by 64 uh, with the best size defined that is a 16 and with these commands we are reading all the images for validation uh, that will go into the valid ds uh, with this uh, canvas pre-processing uh, a data set uh, from directory so here data directory is defined and then validation split is again defined that is a 20 percent i mean the 2k images will go in for the validation so a, again a seed is defined uh, so that will be used for shuffling the images and all the images are resized to 64 by 64 in the best size defined and with this command you can print uh, the labels uh, i mean the classes uh, since there are two folders only with mask and without mask so these two uh, commands will uh, find the labels uh, that will be inferred from the folder names so when you execute this uh, the two folder names will be uh, printed as the labels or class names okay so that is the automatic uh, uh, finding the names of uh, labels uh, and with these uh, commands actually we are uh, going for the memory optimization and speed up execution so uh, if the your data size is large uh, for example here also in this case we are handling the total 10,000 images so it will uh, speed up uh, your execution uh, we are using the two functions cache and the prefetch. Uh, uh, this cache function uh, will uh, try to keep the images into the memory, uh, I mean the RAM, after reading from the disk. So it will uh, help us in the speedy execution and also the prefetch uh, uh, help the system to execute uh, the model as well as it uh, fetch the data from the library or uh, images from the pipeline. So it helps us in the parallel execution. So uh, these uh, uh, code uh, lines will help us uh, in the memory optimization and speed of execution. So now we are defining the number of classes. Of course, that is two with mask and without mask. And here we are defining our uh, neural network model. So which is of course of the type sequential. And here we are defining all the layers of our uh, deep CNN. Uh, uh, first, uh, we are rescaling all the images in the range 0 to 1 actually uh, we have rgb images so uh, we have uh, the pixel values from 0 to 255 okay so that is not suitable for uh, this deep cnn model so your pixel values must be in the range 0 to 1 so that's why we are uh, rescaling all the pixel values uh, from 0 to 1 by uh, dividing all the pixels uh, by 255 okay and then uh, uh, we are defining a convolution layer which has a 16 uh, filters of size 3 by 3 uh, the padding used is the same and uh, which is uh, which has the activation of uh, type relu that means uh, rectified linear units where all the negative uh, values will be omitted and uh, next layer is uh, max pooling uh, which is utilizing a 2 by 2 max pooling uh, where the maximum value is uh, considered uh, while other values are neglected so it, it it will help us to reduce the size of the data and then again we are defining a convolution layer which has the 32 different filters of size 3 by 3 and uh, activation is again ReLU and then uh, uh, max pooling 2 by 2 max pooling and then again uh, another convolution layer uh, which has a 64 uh, filters uh, of size 3 by 3 uh, which has a ReLU activation followed by the max pooling, 2 by 2 max pooling. And uh, to avoid the uh, overfitting, uh, we are uh, implementing the dropout point 2. 
then uh, we are using the layer flattening and then we are defining a fully connected layer uh, okay uh, with the activation ReLU uh, which has uh, uh, 64 nodes and in the last uh, again there is a fully connected layer uh, which has nodes equal to the number of classes of course that is equal to 2. Then we are defining the number of epochs for training that is 7. Uh, in your case uh, uh, you can change it uh, to get the better uh, results or better training. Then here we are defining uh, some uh, training parameters such as uh, we are defining the optimizer which optimizer we are going to use for training. So here we are using the Aram optimizer. Uh, we have the gradient descent uh, and others also. And uh, then uh, with this uh, command model.fit, uh, we uh, are training our model. So when this line is executed, your training is started. So it requires your training uh, data set. I mean all the training images and all the validation images and then number of epochs and uh, once this training is finished it will of course take time because it has to handle the 10,000 images so it will require a few minutes uh, once this is finished then you can find some parameters such as uh, we are finding the uh, training accuracy and then validation accuracy then also we are finding the errors i mean the training loss and then validation loss so these values are uh, obtained uh, just to plot uh, these uh, accuracy and loss curves so we can have the ideas about uh, the training uh, procedure. So with these uh, plot commands, actually we are plotting the two curve. Uh, in first, we are plotting uh, the accuracy curve, the accuracy for training and accuracy for validations. And in the second curve, uh, we are plotting the loss functions. I mean, uh, loss for training and loss for validation. Okay. And uh, in last, uh, I have uh, made this function. Uh, recog out. So when you execute this function, uh, a, a system dialog box appears. Okay, so where you can choose your image, uh, which you want to test. So uh, when you uh, select the image, it will uh, go to uh, this variable IMG with the Keras pre-processing. So image will be loaded with a defined uh, image size. I mean. The image will be resized to that 64 by 64 and then it is again further pre-processed uh, to make it uh, compatible uh, for the model and then with this uh, command model.predict uh, this image is passed in this function uh, then uh, prediction is done so the final output uh, uh, goes to this prediction so here you can see uh, for the two classes i mean two labels you get the two numbers and then uh, we apply the softmax on this prediction uh, and then the final confidence score goes to in this score variable so that is printed with this print command so here you can see that uh, for the two classes uh, you get the final confidence score so on the basis of that you can predict uh, whether uh, the input image belongs to the first category or to the second category okay so uh, here you can see uh, the some result that we obtain during the uh, training of the model. So when you execute this program, you get this type of output uh, in your spider IDE. So here you can see uh, the various epochs. I mean the first epoch uh, where you get the validation accuracy of 99.1. Then in second epoch, it reduces to 98.95. Then it further increases to 99.25 and then 99.3 and so on. And in the last, after seven epochs, we get the final validation of 99.3% accuracy. Okay, here you, uh, you can see this uh, accuracy, 93.7, etc. This is your training accuracy, okay? And this is the validation accuracy. So in this case, I'm getting uh, 99 plus accuracy. Uh, this number uh, exactly will not repeat every time when you uh, execute this program because uh, uh, we are shuffling uh, the images uh, every time we are not taking the same images for training and validation. So uh, when you execute this program, you will get some uh, something different than this 99, but you will get 99 plus. And here are the uh, two plots. Uh, which are showing your uh, training and validation accuracy as well as loss. So this is the accuracy curve. 
So this blue one is uh, training accuracy. So it is uh, starting from 94% and reaching towards 99. And this red one is your uh, final outcome. So it is uh, uh, your validation accuracy. So here it is uh, reached to a straight line after seven epochs. So that reached to 99.3 as I have shown. And this is the loss curve, okay? So this blue one is your training loss and this is a validation loss. And uh, here uh, we have some uh, input and output. So uh, uh, we have given uh, the single images for testing. So when I give this image, I get this type of output. So it says that this image most likely belongs to with the mask category, okay? With a confidence score 95.46. So it is identifying correctly. And when I give this image as the input, it again says that this belongs to with mask with a 100% confidence score. And uh, when I give this image as input for testing, I again get with mask with 100% confidence score. So uh, here uh, you can see that your uh, trained network is working very fine. And then uh, I give these uh, images without mask. So again, you can see that this image most likely belongs to without mask with a confidence score 99.96. And again, uh, without mask with 99.98 and without mask with 100% confidence. So this uh, output is validating the uh, great performance of uh, this implemented uh, deep CNN for identifying uh, the face with mask and without mask. So now let me go to the Python program and let me show you how uh, you can run it and what type of output you will achieve. So I'm jumping to the spider IDE. Uh, so this is the spider IDE. So this program I have already written here and I will just uh, run this program by uh, pressing this button. Okay, so I'm pressing this run button and the execution will start. So here you can see that uh, uh, found uh, 10,000 images belonging to two classes uh, using 8,000 for training and uh, 2,000 for validation. And uh, here you can see the labels. Uh, I'm in the with mask and without mask. I'm in the two uh, labels which are inferred from the folder structure. And uh, then uh, you can see these uh, few outcomes, uh, which is because of these uh, lines. Uh, Auto-tune, uh, where I have used this uh, cache and uh, prefetch. So it's uh, taking some time uh, to manipulate 10,000 images. And now you can see that uh, the epoch one has started. Okay, so the accuracy is being calculated and loss is uh, here you can see, uh, loss is being calculated. So the epoch one has started and then uh, you will see the epoch two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So at the end of the seventh epoch, uh, we'll get the overall validation accuracy. So this overall process will take some time. So uh, let me fast forward uh, this part of the video, okay? Okay, uh, now training is completed and it took around five to six minutes. And here you can see that the final outcome, uh, uh, which is the validation accuracy is 99.1 in this case. So uh, here uh, we get uh, some variables and, uh, and here we got the plot. So these are the plot uh, which are showing the uh, accuracies and loss curves. So you can see the enlarged version uh, I have just copied and uh, in the paint I can paste it. So these are your uh, accuracy curves and the loss curves as I have already shown uh, you in uh, my previous slides. So now let me test this trained model for uh, different uh, testing images. So for that I will execute this uh, function uh, recog out. So recog out. So I'm executing this. Okay, so it is uh, asking me to choose uh, 
the input image so i'm choosing this image let's say uh, this with mask and let me see what output i will achieve okay so this image most likely belongs to with mask so that is okay with a confidence code 99.99 okay so now let me test another image and uh, here i can choose uh, the second one and you can see uh, uh, this image uh, belongs to uh, category with mask uh, with 100% confidence so now let me execute uh, again for third image uh, this one and uh, here you can see that uh, it is also uh, of the category with mask with 100% confidence so now let me uh, give the input to the non mask category so I can choose uh, this image first one which has no mask and here you can see that uh, uh, this image most likely belongs to without mask with 100% confidence okay so it's okay and again uh, this uh, second image and let me show you the output again it belongs to uh, without mask uh, with 100% confidence and then again uh, the third image uh, this one wm3 and here you can see the output so again uh, this uh, image belongs to without mask with 100% confidence so here you can see that this system uh, or this model which is trained on these uh, 8000 images is working very well and it is able to identify your input images whether it has mask or not so that's it for this video hope you have uh, enjoyed this video uh, in the coming video i will uh, uh, try to implement this uh, trained model uh, in a real-time environment that means i will try to interface a uh, camera uh, where you can uh, come uh, in front of camera with and without mask and it will tell you whether you have a weird mask or not so that will be the real-time implementation you can also also try if you try you can write in the comment so that's it for this video uh, i hope you have enjoyed it so i really uh, thank you all for watching this video uh, please like it and uh, share it to the maximum goodbye